everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the Champions League quarterfinal stage. First leg encounter between Paris Saint-Germain and Barcelona coming on Wednesday. And this here, it's a huge game and that calls for a huge match preview, which is why today we're going through it all. Absolutely everything you need to know ahead of this game. Who is the true favourite? What are the two areas that could make or break Chaffee's team selection? We're going to be talking more about Mbappe. We're going to have a message from PSG's Ultras, and I'm going to be giving my big prediction for the match ahead. It is all on the way for you today. I am delighted to have each and every one of you here with me. It's what we've waited for, so come on and let's do this. But I do have to kick off with some extra special super thanks ahead of this massive game coming in here from the Virgin Islands, from North Carolina, from Denmark. You are watching here from all around the world and we've got yet more support from Max from Dipayan yet again and we've even got a super thanks here today from a Real Madrid fan. I mean, wait, what? Things are getting crazy ahead of the Champions League. Big thank you to all of you guys. And coming into this game, one of the most important things I think we need to focus on here, it's the preparation, because things could not be more different for the two teams. Barca, ahead of the first leg of this Champions League tie, will have played just one match. We have had a full 10 days of rest leading up to this game, which of course leaves us fully rested, very well drilled, you'd imagine, given how much time we've had on the training ground. But the big question that we're all asking ourselves is, are we going to arrive with the sharpness we need? Are we going to be able here to hit the ground running as we need to from the very first minute after this lengthy break? Because taking into account there as well the international break we had back in March, it now means that Barca will have played just two games together in the last month, which really isn't much at all. And when you compare that there with PSG in terms of their preparation, it's been very, very different. They have already played three games since the international break there ahead of the first leg. They have been playing every few days. It is worth noting there that Luis Enrique did heavily rotate at the weekend ahead of this match. But I think it's quite frustrating here for Barca that these breaks, these lengthy layoffs really in between games just had to come after we picked up form. We were entering there our best form of the season and since then we've not really had the opportunity to build on that, to really follow up on those promising signs. So we cannot allow him here, these breaks to upset our rhythm. We still have to arrive with sharpness and with the intensity we showed before. We simply cannot be off the pace. But I think it's interesting, guys, because speaking about finding our form here, I think it's really intriguing to look at the route to the quarterfinal here of the Champions League of the two teams. Because, yeah, people will say Barca's route here to the quarterfinal, and especially coming through the group stages, was extremely unconvincing. And look, on paper, we have the easiest group, and yet we still struggled. So it's well documented to say there that we were not playing well, that we were not looking good in the Champions League, as if we could go deep into this tournament. But I just want to say, nobody's really spoken too much about PSG. Because honestly, yes, they had the much harder group. They had to come up against more difficult teams in their group. But they were not convincing either. Not by a million miles there. You look at their away form in the group stage, they had a shot performance away at Newcastle. They got absolutely destroyed there against a team who in the Premier League this season, they're actually really struggling. PSG lost against Milan, they drew against Dortmund, they scraped through to the knockouts in the end. So by no means here are PSG some super team. They're not a juggernaut here that's just gone through everybody without any problem. They too have had issues throughout the season. And I have picked out here just a few more stats to illustrate what's been happening between the two in this competition because so far in the Champions League, Barca have actually scored more goals than PSG and we've actually conceded less chances. Donnarumma has also been much more active there. He's had more to do in the PSG goal but I think as well when you're looking at going forward, the attacking play of the two teams, what you'll notice there is that PSG they are creating chances. They've had big chances in front of goal. They've had opportunities there but what you would say so far this season is that maybe they haven't been clinical enough. Maybe they have passed up too many chances chances and they of course will have hope that they could turn that around starting on Wednesday but I'm just wondering here guys and here's a question for you would you like to get 
even more fired up for this match to come. Would you like to get even more energised? Get the blood pumping. We'll sit back and get ready. Because I am about to read you a public statement from PSG's Ultra Group. They say this despicable Barcelona. They are so often favoured by referees, they must feel the hostile territory in our stadium. It is our duty to make our stadium a terrifying fortress for them and with the determination of our team, that's unbreakable. They said, let's be united. Let's go to the stadium early. We're red and blue. Make them tremble as soon as they enter for the warm-up, let's unite our legendary Pas de Prince. Let's be merciless. Our only goal is win. And for that, let's play our role to the fullest. Together, we are invincible. And the PSG Ultra Group there, they want Barca to be shaking. They want Barca to be nervous. But if there's one thing that you can actually learn from that statement there, it's the 2017 still to this day, haunts Paris Saint-Germain. It is still etched into their mind. Even now, seven years on, they led 4-0 by four goals to nil on aggregate after the first leg. They thought there was no way back. They thought that it could finally be the year that PSG lifted the Champions League. But they underestimated Barca. They underestimated the power of this club, the power of the camp now, the power of what Barca is. And we made the impossible a reality. We made history that night, completing one of the greatest comebacks this sport has ever seen. And still to this day, no matter what PSG say, no matter what PSG do, they have spent two billion over the past decade or so and they still have zero Champions League titles to their name. Which speaking of PSG's money spent, speaking of the way that their club feels every single season really, I think the dynamic between Kylian Mbappe and PSG right now, that is going to be such an interesting part of both of these matches here. Because I think we've seen the frustration boil over in the past few weeks. We've seen Luis Enrique quite regularly now taking off Mbappe. And Mbappe, he's not hiding his emotions. He is not hiding the fact that he doesn't look like he wants to be at the club anymore. Or inside of PSG, of course they're fuming. For yet another season, it happens every year, Mbappe is seriously threatened to walk away, and it will happen this time, by the way. And is all of that tension, is all of that frustration just on the verge here of spilling over and ending yet another Champions League run at PSG. And it's Barca's job to make that happen. It is our job in this game to push them over the edge, to force them here into submission. We've got to make their life uncomfortable. We've got to get in their faces. We've got to put the pressure on them and we have to watch them crack. Because ahead of this game right here, Mbappe said in his own words, every year, this period is a turning point in the season. He said at the end of April, we will know what kind of season we are going to have. And he said, it's time for the great players. I am ready. And as always, I am not going to hide. PSG and Barca both know their fate this season will be decided in these matches and right now when you're looking at the two teams how they might set up following on from yesterday's tactical preview we're starting to hear more and more now guys that Kylian Mbappe could operate more centrally that he may actually be deployed there down the middle on Wednesday I think it's inevitable at some stage that Mbappe is going to make central runs that he is going to come inside because he's going to want to try and vary those runs as much as possible to be unpredictable but I think it's going to be interesting too even if he does do that well if he comes central then you're up against Kubasi you're up against Araujo as a duo and again let's go head to head with him let's battle him there let's go and take Mbappe on and hopefully take him out of the game because that's yet another reason why I wouldn't just restructure our entire back line just to mark Mbappe I wouldn't move Araujo out to right back I wouldn't move Kunde inside because say you move everything over to the wing to mark Mbappe and then yeah he comes central you've got to keep shifting things around and you've got to keep altering your game plan just to suit Mbappe. Let's keep consistency in that back line. Let's 
stick with what's been working very, very well recently. Everybody knows their role. Everybody knows the job that they have to do. And that's the best way here for our defence, in my opinion, to stay organised and stay focused here on the threats that PSG do possess. But speaking there about somebody like Ronald Araujo, one of the most important notices ahead of this first leg is that he is one of the many Barca players who are just one yellow card away from missing the second leg of this tie. And that's really important here because Yamal, Frankie, Christensen, Felix, Ferran Torres and Roberto, they are also all at risk. And you've got to stay disciplined. You've got to keep your head in this environment because you don't want to pick up a cheap suspension because that could hurt you down the road ahead of the second leg there going into that game. We want to still have our best players at our disposal. So we have to be careful and remember what is at stake. But I want to talk to you guys here about the injury situation right now because Frankie de Jong and Andreas Christensen, they are both looking extremely good ahead of the first leg. The feelings right now are incredible with the two of them and they are both in line to start on Wednesday in Paris. When it comes though to Pedri, he does seem to be a little bit behind those two. It's still possible that he could travel to Paris with the team on Wednesday, but I think ahead of a game of this intensity, Barca don't really plan here on just throwing him back in because he is a little bit further behind on that recovery. He may not be as fully recovered as the others are and I don't think we're going to see Pedri certainly not from the start and possibly not from the bench either in this one. And I think that's when you're looking at Xavi because there have been a few rumours here a few suggestions maybe that in a game like this in the first leg away from home could Xavi play a four man midfield there and I mean four outright midfielders whether it's Christensen, Gundogan, Frankie de Jong and then maybe either Fermin Lopez or Sergi Roberto. Could he go with four midfielders out there and I think personally that would be a mistake in this game and I think Chaffee knows that right now that it would send out too much of a negative message you would hand the initiative you would hand momentum there to PSG I think what we have to do is keep three attacking players out there on the field even if it means the third forward joins up with the midfield and he can drop in and he can play in central areas that's absolutely fine but they've still got to carry a genuine attacking threat because we've got to use our attack here we've got to use our own attack attacking players and threaten PSG as a form of defending against them. We've got to stay in their minds. We've got to make them know that we are right there waiting for any opportunity. And I think then comes the biggest decision of all for Xavi ahead of this game. And that is then who lines up in attack? Who is going to be that third attacking player alongside Lewandowski, alongside Laminia Mal? Who takes up that spot? Will it be Rafinha or will it be Xiao Felix in this game? Because I've got to say, both of them are in really good form. You've got to say, they both contributed in the last few games in front of goal with goals, assists and plenty of quality play between them. And Zhao, he does like the big occasion. He does like the big stage. The atmosphere is there. That gets him going because you've heard recently how hard he's been trying in training, how motivated he looks. He really wants to work his way into Chaffee's starting lineup. But... Even with all of that said, I would still opt for Rafinha. I really would in this game because I just think the first leg here, the conditions of this game, it suits him more than it does Xiao Felix here. We expect PSG to be high up the pitch. We expect them to be leaving space in behind. And Rafinha, we know he operates much more effectively in that open space than somebody like Xiao Felix does. And by the way, the second leg could be a different game. That might actually turn out to be the type of game that suits Xiao more in tighter spaces where there is less room in behind and even in the first leg he can still come on he can still have an impact and a part to play in this game but I think one thing as well that I didn't mention in yesterday's video in yesterday's tactical preview because the video would have been over 20 minutes long but the other reason why Rafinha I feel will be involved on Wednesday is because he can also offer defensive protection and especially looking at that left side we spoke about it yesterday with Cancelo he needs all the support that he can get up against Dem Dembele because everybody has to be aware don't leave him one versus one against Dembele and that means that Rafinha can track back we know how hard he works we know that he's always putting the effort in he covers a lot of ground and we will need him here to be giving absolutely everything up and down all the energy that Rafinha can muster we will need it 
in Paris on Wednesday. Which is why, with all things considered in the end, I think this is how Xavi is going to line up against PSG. Because I think quite clearly, there's players in here that can make a difference. This is a team that honestly, heading into a first leg of a Champions League game away from home against PSG... I would look at that team and think, OK, we can take them on. We have real quality there in midfield. We have a midfield that can certainly get the better of PSG. We have a defence that has stood up to some big challenges of late, that can be well organised. And in that attack, you've got quality as well. We need Robert Lewandowski to have a big night, to be clinical when chances come his way. And what a night it could be for young Lamin Yamal. And even off the bench, as we said, Jao Felix can come on Vita. So Roque is available and Fermin Lopez can have a part to play. We have options and we do have quality in this Barcelona side. Which brings us on to the predictions. And I think it's quite clear that many Barcelona fans can see we do have quality. We have the potential. We have the talent here to get through this matchup against PSG. Now, that's not to say that we definitely will or that we absolutely will in the first leg. But there is confidence. There is a feeling here that we can get a result. Whether that is a win by one goal. Whether it's getting a draw in the first leg and taking things back to our home in the second. We will have to wait and see. But there is plenty of confidence. And you can see that clearly here as well with the channel members a potential 2-0 win perhaps Andrew there is going 3-1 Barca Yamal Lewandowski and Rafinha to score Thiago is opting for a 1-1 draw away but that PSG defence is vulnerable and we do have as well a potential 3-0 win for Barca could you imagine that but when it comes to my prediction I've got to be honest I was going to sit on the fence, I was going to say a one-all draw. I was going to say it was a tight game, you know, not much to separate the two. A one-all draw after the first leg. We'd probably take that and head back to the Olympic Stadium. But I'm not going to do that. I am not going to say that right here and now. I am actually going to go here with a Barca win. I think we can go to Paris, face up against PSG, and win this game. I'm going to go 2-1 Barca, and I feel as though we might actually get a first-half goal. And if we can score first in this game, and early... PSG have to come out. PSG even more so then will commit players forward. And the more that they do that, the more space that can open up for us. And we can certainly try to hurt them. But that's what I'm hoping for. That's what we're all hoping for. All that's left now is to see it happen. Stand up. Be brave. Play for this shirt, for the badge, for the history of this club. And above all else, on Wednesday night, make us proud and i cannot wait for this game now i cannot wait for this moment we have been waiting for it in the champions league we want to have a deep run and could this be our tournament to do it do let me know guys your feelings right now let me know the emotions inside of you are there nerves are there excitement bubbling away in there i will see you soon there will be still more videos to come we are not done yet on the build-up i am hyped and I really hope that you guys are too. Thank you indeed for watching here today. Thank you for all of your energy. And I will catch you soon. But until next time, as always, Vishka El Barca. Uh -huh.